good morning. Let's see who comes on. Sam's just... I'm just go oh, I can't get my hair up. Who have we got? Erica Johnson's got the gold. Erica's got the gold. Deborah Ashton has got silver. Come on, who's bronze? Who's bronze? Helen Edwards, she's flying. He's oh, Helen, lovely. Well done. Hi, Nikki. All right. I'm in the right group, aren't I? Hi, Trish. Yeah. I'm going to put a little blue thing on it so it just keeps my hair out because this bobble isn't very tight. Morning, Sue. White. Right. Lovely to see you. Ooh. Right. Okay then. I've been up since four. Four o'clock. I know. I didn't cut my lippy on. What colour? I'll just pick a colour out of the kitchen drawer. Cut that. How's that for a bit of bright pink? Lippy on. Done. Hi, Sarah Louise. Right. Yeah, I've been up since four. I just had the urge to get on the peloton i only did like 40 minutes and really slowly so i wasn't you know because of my back okay it's hard to sit upright like that although i managed it you know i've been doing like five minutes a week <laughs> five minutes a week on the peloton rather than <laughs> nearly 300 miles a month that's how little i'm doing because i just I just really, my heart's with Joe Wicks at the moment. I know you all know how much I like him, but it's because I've done a 24 hour challenge and I did, it was 10 years ago and I did the 24 hours, 24 spinning classes back to back. I'm not being funny, I wasn't, you know, I taught 24 hours, 24 spinning classes back to back and it was, um, it was madness. And it was so hard and each class was like a class of 45 minute class with a 50 minute turnaround with the people and then another one and literally when you've only got five hours left that was the hardest time i remember at four o'clock in the morning was the worst four to five o'clock you wouldn't think so and you've only got four hours left I think it'd be easy but it was the hardest so i just wanted to get up and get on my bike and just send him some vibes so yes for 24 hours it does i miss doing big challenges like that right we've got a, one this morning it's um uh, some people might find it difficult because it's about money uh but you can attract the magic into any area of your life um so please do share you know honestly another message i got yesterday from somebody who's just loved it they said it, they've been feeling really low but a friend shared it and it popped up on a page and it, she, she, she did it and I just love it when people do that because I know now she's benefiting from it. And there was when I was on Radio Lancashire, I've forgotten the lady's name. A lady, was it Renee or something? A lady said, oh, I was out shopping and I heard you. So I came back and looked you up and here I am and I'm loving it. So welcome if anybody heard me on Radio Lancashire. So... I know he's doing great, isn't he? He's doing really well. I think it's up to nearly 700,000, so they said. I think they got the last... Uh... So please do share. Please do continue to share. And also with the sharing, I don't want people to look and think, oh, it's day five, what's the point? Oh, it's day five. I mean, you could have watched yesterday's video standalone. And it, any of these videos, you could just watch as a one-off and it's going to have a bit of an impact. But what's it going to be like when you do all 28? Eh? So, right... I've had to, I have a business coach meeting usually at seven o'clock on a Friday morning. I've had to put Ruth off till half past, so I can't be late. Um, I know I could give Joe a death stare, couldn't I? So it's lovely. Right. Now, are you sitting comfortably, people? Are you sitting comfortably? So day five is magic money. Please do share. Joanna Johnson, thank you for sharing. I do give you all a little love heart if you share, so let's have a go. Thank you so much for being here, by the way, and I really do hope it's helping. Right, the first quote by Christian Himnal. Gratitude is riches, complaint is poverty. We could finish it there, couldn't we, and you'd have learnt something. So, 
Claire the Cleaner is joining in today. Ellen, that's ace. Come on, Claire the Cleaner. Love it. Oh, I love the feeling of cleaning. I do. Right then, so just stay open-minded because this really helped me five years ago. If there's a lack of money in your life, understand that feeling worried, envious, jealous, disappointed, discouraged, doubtful or fearful about money can never bring money to you because those feelings come from a lack of gratitude for the money that you already have. Complaining about money, arguing about money, getting frustrated about money, being critical of the cost of something or making someone else feel bad about money are not acts of gratitude and the money in your life can never improve, it will worsen. No matter what your current situation, the very thought that you don't have enough money is being ungrateful for the money that you have. You have to get your current situation out of your mind and instead feel grateful for the money that you do have so the money in your life can magically increase. Right, let me just take a pause from there because some of you will be effing and jeffing thinking, oh, it's all right for you, Rhonda Byrne, with your book deal and we'll try living here and try and being furloughed and try and being that. I totally get that. So I want to interject a moment and give you a bit of my words rather than Rhonda's because that really pissed me off when I first read it and listened to it because it was five years. Oh, it is Renee. Hey, brilliant. Yeah, I heard you on the radio. Well, I'm delighted. Just think you didn't even know it existed this time yesterday. So here we are talking about magic money. This can be really difficult for a lot of people. And I'm just speaking from experience because... I did The Secret first, which is Rhonda's book, the, the Secret, it's huge. And I listened to it and it talks a lot about the money in there. And I was going through bankruptcy at the time and it was just horrendous. We were in arrears in the mortgage. We would have lost the house if it hadn't been in negative equity. We owed all the credit cards we'd borrowed for the business. We were losing all our property portfolio that we'd worked hard to build. We had bailiffs at the door. Some of the investors, one of them turned out to be an Irish gangster and he was wanting his money. It was just an awful time and it's all you talk about. It's all you, the worry that you have. And so when I first came across this and she quite matter-of-factly just says, well, you have to be grateful. I was thinking, will you just piss off? You've no idea, love. Grateful. You know, when you're worried for this, you're going to lose the house, you're going to do that, your mortgage in arrears, you've got everybody phoning you, chasing, literally had £2.80 in your bank and your cards have been rejected in the shops and it was just an awful time, just through no fault of our own, it was just after the recession had hit and everything just went tits up. So that very brief synopsis there, I hope you don't feel I'm oversharing, but I'm just giving you some background. So I get what it's like when you feel like you're in the shit when it comes to finance. Um, I don't know. I've no idea, Dan. I've not had time to look. So it's radio, sounds radio, Lancashire. Ask me if there's a link to the radio interview. I've not had a second. Not even listened to it myself. So anyway, um, it's awful. It's a really awful position to be in. You know, I think whether you have health, wealth, relationship issues if you're really in the shit in one of them or more than one it's just horrible it's all you become to think about so when I first came across this and she wanted to be grateful for money that you have I thought well, I don't have any what you're what you're chatting about love I don't have any it feels shit I'm frightened I'm panicking I can't pay the mortgage can't do any of that so I've nothing to be grateful for that's that was my attitude if I'm honest it really was. So I just want you to bear that in mind that I understand if you're getting a bit pissed off because I realise at the moment, especially people are out of work, people are losing businesses, people don't know, you know, they've laid staff off, you might have lost your job, your partner might have lost the job. And the last thing you might feel like is me, we're trying to go and be grateful for your money, you know, so just stay open minded. I just want you to know that I get it. I understand if you're getting annoyed with her. So just bear with. Whoever has gratitude for money will be given more and he or she will have an abundance. Whoever does not have gratitude for money, even what she has, will be taken from her. 
And that was hard to listen to, I tell you. I sort of go, yeah, whatever. Feeling grateful for money when you have very little is challenging for anyone. But when you understand that nothing will change until you're grateful, you will be inspired to do it. And even then I started to think, oh, well, hang on, she's acknowledging it, so I'm going to read on and listen. The subject of money can be a tricky one for many people. I've just said that especially when they don't have enough. So there are two steps to the magic money practice. It's important that you read through the entire practice and I'm gonna read it to you. Okay, right then. This is quite, I think this is quite a powerful thing because we've got to get ourselves into an attitude of gratitude around money, which is really hard when you feel you've got lack of it and you're struggling and you're worrying and Christmas is coming. So this worked really well for me to make me think about it in a different perspective. Have you shared it yet? Because people are going to want to hear this at this time of year. And I just want you to know that I understand if you're hating it at this particular exercise because you're worried about money. Because that's where I was five years ago. It was horrible. Right. Sit down. I want you to do this today. You've got to do this today, this morning. You don't just have to write anything. Sit down and take a few minutes to think back through your childhood. You don't even have to sit down, really. Before you had any or much money. So go back to your childhood. Um, and I understand that not everybody's had a, you know, some people have very difficult childhoods, but just go with it. Go back through your child before you had any or much money of your own. As you recall each memory where money was paid for you, say and feel the magic words thank you with all your heart for each instance. So, and what you can do, you don't have to sit down, you can do it while you, you know, emptying the dishwasher or walking the dog or whatever. So I want you to start thinking, go back through your childhood as early as you want and start thinking, I'm going to give you some examples while Rhonda is, should I say, I'm going to read them out. So as you recall each memory where money was paid for you, say and feel the magic words, thank you. Because we take it for granted as children, not all this stuff just appears. Right, so did you always have food to eat? Did you live in a home? Did you receive an education over many years? How did you travel to school each day? You know, did you go on the bus or did your parents drive you in a car? Did you have school books, school lunches and all the things you needed for school? Did you have, did you go on any vaccinations when you were a child? Sorry, vacations, not vaccinations. Did you go on any holidays? What were the most exciting birthday gifts you received when you were a child? I mean, do we, have we ever, I'm just going to interrupt her a minute, because I'm going to tell you my most beautiful gift. But did you ever, did we, have we ever stopped to consider that all that has cost money? All those things that got us to, um, until we started earning our own money, was provided by somebody else because of their hard work. The most exciting birthday gift. I will never, ever, ever forget the memory of this too, is a birthday and Christmas. I will never forget, I think it was my eighth or ninth birthday. I used to play in one of the, in a downstairs like little box room we used to have that the piano was in. And I used to get two stools from the bar stool, from the bar in the kitchen. And I'd put, we used to have padding that used to go over the G plan table, the dining room table, these brown leather pads. And I'd put them across these two stools. I'd make myself a desk. And I'd have my colouring in pads, my pen pots, my stapler, hole punch, everything. I just used to think I was some sort of office buff. And I'll never forget my eighth and ninth birthday coming downstairs and there was a little pile of presents. And there was one on the top and I opened it up and it was a petite typewriter in like a shitty brownie beige two-tone. Beige and dark brown. And I loved it. I loved it, honestly. I just sat at my crappy little desk <laughs> for hours doing the quick brown jock fox jumped over the lazy dogs and I could do it as quick and I just loved it and loved it. My other favourite present 
was a girl's world that I got when I was about 10 at Christmas. I remember opening the sack and opening the top of the paper and saw the pink and grey and white striped box and it was a girl's world. And yeah, you don't really just say thank you, don't you? Tell me, oh, thanks. You know, but now you look at it and think all that money was earned. You know, my parents had to go out and earn that money and do whatever they had to do, you know, for anything. So I just thought I'd interrupt the list there. But did you have a bike, toys or a pet? Did you have clothes as you grew up so quickly from one size to the next? There was four of us in five years and we used to have a family trip out every so often to Banks Lions, the shoe shop in Lancaster, to get our Clarks' shoes, you know. Did you go to the movies, play sports, learn a musical instrument or pursue a hobby? Yeah, I used to go to ballet, you know, and tap. And, you know, I used to play badminton. Uh, played the piano for a bit, but the teacher sent me home, said I was a mental block, never got over it. We used to go to the pictures and I used to put a long party dress on. I'll never forget watching 101 Dalmatians, the pictures and four of us, you know, so that'll be six of us, not, does not cheap. Do you go to the doctor and take medicine when you were not well? Did you go to the dentist? You know, did you have essential items that you used every day, like your toothbrush and toothpaste, soap and shampoo? Did you ever travel anywhere in a car? Did you watch television and make phone calls, use lights, electricity and water? Don't use the phone till after six o'clock. <laughs> it's not six o'clock yet. They moved it to seven about ten years ago, the Robin Gets, didn't they, BT? Six o'clock, do you remember? You can't phone, can't phone Jilly till it's six o'clock, Sally. I'd spent all my day with her at school, Jilly, my best friend at primary school. I'd come home, we'd phone each other for another three hours. So to get yourself into an attitude of gratitude around money, rather than thinking of your lack of now, think of what you've had in the past. Think of all the stuff and you automatically soften and you start to feel this gratefulness even if you don't want to do it so all of these things cost money and you receive them all at no charge as you travel back through memories of your childhood and youth you'll realize how many things you receive that equate to hard-earned money be grateful for every single instance of memory because when you feel sincere gratitude for the money you've received in the past your money will magically increase in the future. It is a guaranteed by universal law. That's what they say. So I, what I used to say to myself five years ago, and literally, I remember we had £2.80 for about a week. And I remember it's when I used to work for Jason Bell and I used to go, thank God, and get away from all the shit for two weeks at a time. And we used to have the desk over there we used to have a big glass desk and that's the kitchen table and the fruit bowl used to be on the table and it was all we used to argue about me and so we used to argue about it all the time and I remember chatting to him on uh, FaceTime one day and I knew we hadn't been paid because he worked for himself because it was after the recession people weren't paying him and I knew we hadn't been paid, and so that meant the mortgage hadn't been paid, so that meant the bailiffs were going to be coming. And it was just awful. I remember looking at him, the reason I knew we hadn't been paid, because behind him, there was no fruit in the fruit bowl. So I knew we hadn't been shopping, because we didn't have any money to go shopping. It was that bad for a while, honestly. It was just a horrible time. And it was it used the fear that it creates, and so it's really hard to be grateful for money when you're in that situation and lack of but this taught me so much to just think and I just thought what have I got to lose and when you do the secret she gets you to do you know the suggestions of writing stuff and I just thought this is ridiculous and I remember talking to Luther the dog when I was out walking listening to it thinking what a pile of shit honestly you know and she wanted you to when you got a demand like a credit card bill or a milk bill or anything that you might get you used to, she said, write, write an extra note on it. Instead of seeing it as a £170 bill, write a note on it and pretend it's a cheque and write thank you for £1,700. I remember saying to Luther, she, I'm not doing that, it's bollocks. But I thought, what have I got to lose? What have I got to lose? Because I feel rubbish now. So I started doing it. And it did change my mindset and it stopped me worrying about it as much. It is what it is. 
So why worry on top of that? And it really did make a difference. And do you know what? A couple of weeks later, I got a tax refund. Couldn't believe it. I thought, is that just a coincidence? Thought, but I'm going with it anyway. So um, I'm nearly done. But I just wanted to give you a bit of context from my point of view uh, to go with this. Because I know it can be difficult for people. So one thing I, we want you to do now, Rhonda and myself, and look what I, I found something from five years ago when I did this. Don't get upset again, Sally. I've just got a little wash there. To continue with this practice of magic money, take a dollar bill and write on a sticker that you place on the bill. Well, I took a five pound note and it's an old five pound note because this was from five years ago. So when I was going through all that crap and the bankruptcy and the fear and losing the house and the bailiffs, and feeling suicidal and just awful. I was doing this practice and I got a five pound note and you write on it or you write on a sticker and shove it on. Thank you for all the money I've been given throughout my life. Thank you for all the money I've been given throughout my life. If somebody wants to write it, that'd be great. Can you see mine there? Thank you for all the money I've been given throughout my life. And I've had that for five years and it's in the bedside cabinet and I see it most nights. And to think how different our situation is now than when it was then. I, mean, I thought I'd never get out of it. I thought I would never get out of that fear and worry and, and feeling of lack. But we have done. We've worked bloody hard, mind. But I've only been able to work hard because I've done stuff like this, because it's put me in a different mindset. So I want you to get, if you can, a five pound note. They don't do a pound note anymore, do they? And the funny material at the moment, you'll have to get a sticker and write it on. I know it's gonna cost you a fiver, but it's worth it. That will be worth five quid. Thank you, Inga. Thank you for all the money I have been given throughout my life. And think back to every little thing that you've received. Do it all day as you're getting in your car to go to Tesco. Think of some that are five, three pounds that you used to get in an envelope for your auntie Brenda. You know, you used to get three quid, didn't you? You didn't get fivers in those days. You got three pound coins. Think of things like that. They gave you it. You know, they gave you a selection box at Christmas. Somebody else's money being given to you. I know it's only small, but think about all those things. Don't think about the panic that you might be feeling now and the fear that you have now, because it's not going to change it. It is not going to change it. And you only worry, you only, I was listening to The Secret last night because I'm listening to The Secret again as I'm doing this. I listened to about half an hour and I was walking yesterday and it's just such a good reminder. You get it on Audible. I love to listen to it. And it's impossible. You only worry because of your thoughts so if you're thinking, worrying about money, worrying about what's going to happen in furlough, what's going to worry about in lockdown, that is what's going to create your feelings. That's how you're going to feel. But if you start thinking about your petite typewriter and your girl's world and all the stuff you were given, you're going to feel differently because your feelings are created from the thoughts that you have. Now, you can't control the thoughts that come into your head that just pop in. But that's a whole other video and I talk about that a lot in the membership because you can choose, you can't control a thought, but you can certainly choose how long you spend with that thought. So if you're thinking about, shit, Simon's just lost his job, which you, we've both been made redundant <coughs> over the years. How are we going to pay the mortgage? That's awful, we've got that to do, we're going to get behind. And you start going, oh my God, it's awful, it's awful, what are you on about? And then you start arguing. I can't control the thought that comes into my head, <gasps> Simon's lost his job, but I can certainly control how much time I then give it. So even if you get an awful thought into your head, think of your favourite birthday present when you were a child instead and just start thinking about that. Secondhand chopper bike, how oh, ace, love a chopper. I tell you how we had a rally and I thought, again, mum and dad, they took us to the local, only I had one bike, but they must have coming to a bit of money at some stage because remember they went through a really tough time as well when I was about 11 and 12 but when we were younger I felt we were all right 
And I remember going to the local diner start in Carnforth and we all got bought a bike. You know, it was mad. So anyway, take your magic five pound note with you today and put it in your wallet, purse or pocket. Now I'm not being funny. I don't even carry my purse anymore. Ever since the invention of Apple Pay, I don't know where my purse is. Um, so put it somewhere tape it to your fridge, put it in the aisle of the back of my wardrobe, I have loads of stuff, like this is the condiment cupboard, I have loads of stuff, photographs on the back of my wardrobe, but that's a whole other video, um, and look at it as many times as you want, take it and hold the magic £5 note in your hands, read your written words and be truly grateful for the abundance of money you've been given in your life. The more sincere you are, the more you feel it, the faster you will see a miraculous change to the circumstances in your money. You will never know ahead of time how, man, how your money will increase, but likely you will see many different circumstances change for you to have more money. You could find money you didn't realise you had, receive unexpected cash or cheques, receive discounts, rebates or decreasing costs or receive all kinds of material things that would have cost you money. After today, put your magic £5 note in a place where you will continue to see it every day to remind you to be grateful for the abundance of money you have been given, not forgetting that the money... Not forgetting that the more times you look at your magic £5 note and feel gratitude for the money you have been given, the more magic you will be bring forth. An abundance of gratitude for money equals an abundance of money. If you find yourself in a situation where you're about to complain about something to do with money, whether it's through your words or your thoughts, ask yourself, am I willing to pay the price for this complaint? Am I willing to pay the price for this complaint? Because that one complaint will slow or even stop the flow of money into your life. From this day forward, make a promise to yourself that whenever you receive money, no matter how small, do you know what I'm most grateful for? Is when I find pennies on the floor. I always pick them up and I have the wholehearted thank you because it's something my dad used to do. And so I always done it. I've always done it and so do my children. Pick a penny up because you're accepting it. The amount of people I say, oh, don't pick that up. We were coming out of a garden centre once a couple of years ago and there was 5p on the floor and a bloke went down to pick it up, an elderly bloke. And the woman said, what are you bothering with that for, Tom? It's a waste of time. And I just, I was horrified. And I thought, that's you blocking no, pick it up, it's been sent. You know, I know that sounds a bit daft for some people, but don't block any channels. Pick it up and say, thank you. I do it every time. Thank you, thank you, Dad. You know, that's what I do. Thanks, Dad, with my penny. And we put them all in a little money bank that we've got in our bedroom. So from this day forward, make a promise to yourself. Oh, I've got to go that whenever you receive any money, whether it's your salary for work, a refund, a discount, or something that someone gives you that costs money, you will be truly grateful for it. Each of these circumstances means that you have received money and each instance gives you an opportunity to use gratitude's magical power to increase and multiply your money even more by being grateful for the money you have just received. So don't go, oh, thanks, thanks. I want you to be really, really grateful. Think of all those things that you've been given in the past, not just material things, but when your mum had to take to the dentist and she drove in the car, the actual car, the clothes that you were wearing at the time, the petrol that they put in the car, the logs and the coal that they had delivered every week or put on the fire, you know, the Christmas tree when it came, it's all all bought with money that you've had so let's be grateful for that and so I love the way she does this for money because it was really hard for me to be grateful in the present so um it is I know it is it's wonderful isn't it Leanne it's great I remember finding 20 quid in uh the London Underground ones that top of the escalators I found 20 quid so I changed it into four fivers and gave it to four different homeless people so, um, right, yeah, I'm going. I've got a session now with Ruth, so please do share. 
please know that you don't have to do them all. Obviously, if you do do them all, it's going to be great. But I'll put a reminder on. Do you know what? Before we go, let's just have let's just have another. I want you to say it again. Thank you for all the money I've been given throughout my life. And I want you to write it. And what I'm going to do, I will post this later. The four o'clock reminder. I'm going to post it later. I want you to have done yours. And I want to see pictures of them. I know it's going to cost you a fiver. But it's going to be worth it. Because this is going to come back tenfold. So thank you for all the money I've been given throughout my life. So come on. Are we ready? One, two. There's 224 of us. One, two, three. Thank you. For all the money I've been given throughout my life. <sighs> Don't you feel it when you're doing it with other people? You do. So let's take that into our day. So no matter how shit your day gets, just be grateful for all the money you've been given throughout your life. All right then. Day five done. Just think, how many? We've got another 23 days of this. How cool is that? Saturday tomorrow. I'll do it at seven. I might have a couple of weekends where I'm a bit later, but I'll get up and do it at 7am. I might do it from the bed. Who knows? All right, then lots of love. Have the most wonderful of days and please, please share. Honestly, it makes such a difference. I just want, I don't want anybody sat there worrying and worrying and worrying and not being able to get off that thought bus. If you share this video, and somebody listens to this, they might think I'm a total dickhead. I'm not bothered, but they might, it might just seep in. All right then, lots of love. Cheerio. Bye.